I have a mission that I think you'll all relate to. The mission is to save the planet for all of humanity. And the mission is to leave behind something for our children and for the children that come after them that's full of health, happiness, and hope. Now, why do I say hope? Because hope enables us to overcome fear and our negative expectations about the future. Hope isn't some romantic conceit. It's a generator, a power source that lives inside of us. It's the catalyst for change. Hope is the antidote to fear. And I believe that fear is our biggest problem today. I think that living with constant fear makes the world worse. And I don't think we fully realize that we are. It's the new unconscious norm of the collective consciousness. It's insidious. It's, we become accustomed to it and we don't even realize it's there. Just go to the morning news and the entertainment media. Now this stuff even comes to us through our smartphones. And through that lens, the world seems to be an incredibly grim place. Actually grimmer than it really is. But what happens is we turn inwards and we become self-centered and we give up trying to change the planet, trying to fix things in time for our children and the generations after them. You know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1933 at his first inaugural address probably made his most memorable statement. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now, personally, I know fear. I know it really well because when I was 13 in 1967, I was told that I had juvenile diabetes and I had maybe 20 years to live. And I was also told that year that the last five of those 20 years would be full of horrible diabetic complications like amputations, like blindness, like kidney failure, and probably the worst thing to say to a young 13-year-old boy, impotence. Those were the dark ages of insulin therapy, those 15 years. There were no medical breakthroughs. So I burned the candle at three ends, trying to get the most out of what little life I had left. I invented the photographer's flash helmet and used it to become the, the personal photographer for my teen idol, Grace Slick, and for um, many, many other celebrities. And before you knew it, I was a photojournalist shooting for Rolling Stone and People Magazine and Time and Life and ultimately for National Geographic. But you know, it, it was difficult. It was a very, very difficult secret life that I led. Because until the early 80s, until the 15 years were up, there was no home blood sugar testing. And during those days, that didn't work. Several, Several times, times a year, my blood sugar would drop precipitously and I'd slide deep, deep into insulin shock my body would release a huge dose of adrenaline and I'd black out, but I'd still be walking like a walking zombie. And every time that happened, I came this close to death. So I know negativity. I really do know negativity and when I see it. And in those days, I fell into a depression and my negativity was literally eating me alive. But you know, in the early 80s, glucose testing came out, and I started to see the silver lining. And I started to win the war in my own head between pessimism and optimism, between sadness and happiness, and most importantly, between self-hatred and self-love. Life got better. And I started to see the world much, much more positively. I was effectively released from hell into heaven. And now at 45 years, my blood sugars are stable most of the time, and I'm told that I can live to be 100 without complications. And I owe, I owe my life, my wonderful life, to health, uh, my wonderful health to technology, to science, and to hope. But in the process of my transformation, I witnessed amazing things that I, that I now see so clearly. There's a revolution of consciousness going on, and it's accelerating. 
It's a spiritual non-denominational optimism and hope. And it's spreading in some areas like wildfire. It's a new collective consciousness and it connects us and gives us the power to fix things just in time if we start now. It only takes a little leap of faith to get on this train of, of positive energy. And once we believe in that power, and once we dial back the media to the per correct perspective, you know, we give it way too much power, and once we um, weight, the, weight the media and its effects on us accurately, the world suddenly looks a lot brighter. I just want to say on the side, it's not the media's fault. Um, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They're keeping eyeballs glued so they can stay in business and, you know, we react to things being cut and exploding and all that stuff, but it does insidiously change everybody, and this has never happened before on this planet. You know, I, th I think it's uh, an insidious kind of subtle brainwashing. You know, it's, it's not brainwashing like really bad brainwashing, but it is really bad because we're all doing it. This brings me to the Visions of Tomorrow project. Its genesis was two years ago at, when I was working at National Geographic, two years, was 20 years ago when I was working at National Geographic <laughs> on science stories. And I learned that solutions exist to every one of the planet's problems. And I met scientists who were working on those solutions and, and they, were, they were either already had them or they were under development. And this continues to this day. And I saw smile lines on the faces of those scientists, not frowns. The smile lines were the most beautiful wrinkles you could ever imagine. Let me give you an example. In 1990, I met a nuclear physicist by the the name of Charles Till at Argonne National Lab. He was worried because we were burning up fossil fuels at an incredible rate and he could see the end. And he was also worried that because we were burning them and we were going to burn them faster and faster that we were going to cause climate change and turn a big chunk of the earth into a desert and that we might be getting close to a tipping point where we might just have that happen and the carrying capacity of earth would vanish. And he was worried that the growth of energy usage was so rapid and so intense that the new green sources just can't keep up. They just can't be introduced in time to keep things going. So he co-developed something called the Integral Fast Reactor. And this nuclear reactor has three amazing, simply amazing benefits. First of all, it's inherently safe. And when I say safe, I mean much, much, much safer than today's plants. Secondly, by reprocessing the fuel it uses over and over and over and reusing it, it can produce 100 to 300 times more energy than the existing nuclear power plants of today. And finally, because of this reprocessing, when the, the fuel is now waste, it's only radioactive in a dangerous sense for a few hundred years, not hundreds of thousands of years. And just think, we could use it to fix the waste from all the plants that we've had that's out there and just get more energy out of it, like another 100 times as much. My perspective was just blown by Charles Till, and I started looking around and I started seeing other situations like that where there were problems that were being solved that weren't getting promoted properly. So the Visions of Tomorrow Foundation's first project is a documentary motion, motion picture where we'll be presenting solutions to six the six world's biggest problems, six solutions for six huge problems. And we're also going to address the seventh problem, which is fear and the fact that we're just isolating our energy from, from being able to be part of the solution. So we'll interview some and, and, and learn about uh, things from some psychologists and some brilliant spiritualists from around the world who can teach us how to click the switch in our heads, take that little step just little bits of positive thinking become very, very, very powerful. So when they, people leave the movie theater, I'm hoping that their arms, when they come in, will be this wide about how big the world's problems are. And when they leave, they'll be this big. Maybe we can manage that. And I'm hoping people will kind of be floating on air a little bit, and it will help drive the movement. So am I a dreamer? No. We're in fundraising and pre-production. We're gathering a a collection of amazing visionaries in the spiritual and scientific arenas around the world. And it's gonna happen. We've already started filming. So I'm gonna show you for the first time 
uh, online, the fundraising and, and production trailer we've created, pre-production trailer. But before I do that, I'm going to leave you with a few words from uh, Mike Dooley. His best-selling book is called Thoughts Become Things, and the subtitle is Choose Them Wisely. Well, today, we have to choose wisely. We have to become part of the search to figure out which of these solutions is the best solution. And we have to get on with it quickly to save the planet for our children. We each need to become one of the conscious antidotes for the world's problems. Thank you. Can you let it roll? It's not rocket science. You know, we really are a family on this planet. We really are a global community. So there has to be the sense that there's hope. Thank you very much. This is uh, Rachel, whose voice was the narrator's voice on the trailer. And Rachel's just like all of our kids. She's like all the kids on this planet. We have to get on with this project of fixing things and focusing our energy and our attention on that. We have to leave a healthy, happy, hopeful planet for all the generations to come. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh -huh.